the Stefan Boltzmann law. The Stefan Boltzmann law says that the brighter, the hotter and bigger a star is, the more energy it will emit. The other one said the, the more mass it has, it will emit more energy. This one says if it's big, if it's hot, then it's going to emit a lot of energy. The equation is L equals R squared T to the power fourth. Luminosity is radius squared t to the power of fourth. Where is this coming from? One of the difficulties about this equation that students might have is that they won't remember which one is squared, which one is fourth. They might think it's radius to the fourth temperature squared. They might think it's radius squared temperature squared. So how do you remember which one to square? Well, if you understand where the law is coming from, it's going to make it easier and to understand, you look at this sheet. See, what this one is saying is if you take any kind of star, any kind of light bulb, any kind of light emitting object and you take a square meter of it, square meter of it, based on physics, a physics principle, that square meter will emit energy proportional to temperature to the power of fourth, watts. You see, sigma t to the power of four. Don't worry about sigma right now. Sigma is some constant. But for our purposes, we don't need to know what sigma is. So a square meter of any light bulb, even the regular light bulbs we have here on Earth, a square meter of the sun, anything, you will emit temperature to the power of fourth energy. Then you go over here and then you say, okay, what does that mean? The total energy radiated per second by the star is its luminosity. Luminosity is energy emitted by one square meter times the number of square meters of its surface, right? So if you take one square meter and then you now multiply how many square meters there are, the number of square meters of its surface, so a star's surface area. What is a star's surface area equal to? For a spherical star of radius r, the surface area is 4 pi r squared. We learned that in from geometry, but maybe you have forgotten that now. If you take a spherical ball, what is the surface area of the ball? 4 pi r squared. Don't confuse that with the area of a circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared, but the area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, right? So when you multiply 4 pi r squared by sigma t to the fourth, what do you get? 4 pi r squared sigma t to the fourth. So why is the radius squared? Because it has to do with the surface area of a sphere. Why is temperature to the fourth? It has to do with how much energy a square meter uh, emits. So now if you go back to the law, now you understand why it's r squared t to the fourth. Okay, so if a star is three times hotter than the sun, and four times as large as the sun, how much energy is it going to emit? What's the luminosity? If I ask it to you that way on the test, how will you know what's what? What's the radius here? Four times as large means the radius is four. Three times hot, temperature is three. So you do four squared times three to the power of fourth. Okay, so on your calculator, what's four squared? 4 squared is 16, that's pretty easy. 3 to the power of fourth, it doesn't mean 3 times 4. It means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, you see. So 81. So you do this times this, and then uh, it will tell you 1 1,296. In the data tables, it, they'll probably be write it again like this. 1.3 times 10 to the third. They'll go 1, 2, 3. They'll round it up to 1.3. They'll say something like that. How about if the radius of the star is 30 times bigger than the sun, much bigger, and the temperature is five times hotter? Ooh, this one is not only bigger, but it's also hotter. If you use this equation, you're going to get 562,500 times as luminous as the sun. Okay? That's pro pro it's still probably allowed, you know. R is 30. L is, uh, T is uh, 5, L is 562,500, 
So again, we would write that maybe like this. Now I'm going to show you one maybe it's impossible to have. If the radius is 12 times bigger than the sun, the temperature is 9 times hotter, 944,784, which is going to be 9.45 times 10 to the 5. Well, it's likely, maybe, maybe not, that such a star actually exists. Why? Because it seems to be a little bit above what we said was the maximum. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it might be impossible. So here is the point of that. You can't simply just devise or make a star as big as you want and as hot as you want. There's some limit to that, okay? You ca I can't say a star is 50 times bigger than the sun, 10 times hotter. Let's find its luminosity. Well, the, we might be able to do the equations, but no such star might exist. One of the things we're going to find out in the next lecture when we talk about star evolution is this. When a star starts dying, it gets big. Big, 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 big. But what happens to its temperature? It starts getting colder. So you can't go both get big and hotter indefinitely. So it gets big, 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 big. It gets colder, 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 colder. When it gets colder, what color does it appear? Red. It becomes a red supergiant. You see? So it becomes huge. One such star is the star that I loved a lot called Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is on the verge of dying. It's a red, bloated supergiant. That means it's going to die within the next 10,000 years. Of course, when I say verge of dying for stars, uh, th that doesn't mean tomorrow. <laughs> it might die uh, in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. We don't exactly know. Okay, so from then on, we're going to start talking about apparent luminosity, and we're going to go into the Hipparchus scale, okay? So remember, print out those stuff that I told you to print out, near stars, bright stars, HR diagram, and HR example. Okay, see you guys.